So the topic of today is how not to go batty in the winter. And you can see people out bundled up, walkers really bundled up, runners just, you know, what would be considered like in New York or somewhere, fall weather gear because they're burning calories and they're heating up. So I'm Sifu Slim and I'm here at Schönbrunn Castle. I'm guessing this castle is from the early 1800s. I'm gonna have to look that up. Could be more ancient than that. But this would have been on the outside of Vienna back in the time where Vienna had walls, you know, fortifications for protection and to delineate and demark the city limits. So how not to go batty in the winter time. So I'm bundled up, but I'm gonna start um, a run right now after doing uh, you know, standing exercises. And I am moved and pleased and excited to be outside at one degree Celsius. So somewhere in the 37 degrees, 38 degrees, somewhere in that realm Fahrenheit. And here's a runner in the distance. You won't be able to see him very well, but he's got shorts on. So good for, good for him. Uh, I could run in shorts today. I tend to not get cold in the legs, but uh, definitely would have my gloves on. Here's a woman without any gloves on and running along. So she has warm hands. So my suggestion to everyone is, you know, you've heard of the winter blues and they affect your mind, body and spirit, which I talk about a lot. A lot of people on the Internet that talk about muscles and fitness and losing weight. Um, they probably know about it, but they don't often talk about the whole mind, body, spirit, karma, being at one with your surroundings, uh, with other humans, with nature, all those types of things. And I think you have to look at that in, um, in a holistic way. And holistic means you're looking at everything. A lot of people use the walking stick, so really, really think that's a good idea. It's fun, and uh, if there's ice, you definitely uh, can use those for uh, providing stability. You can use them for protection. You know, how many uh, bad elements, people, animals, what have you, are going to think twice if you've got poles? And I think, of course, they will think twice if you have poles. So, well, I see people way off in the distance running up there and, and through the trees. Here's a woman with really limited stuff, you know, what you'd call long underwear back in the 1980s, now, you know, running tights, running uh, rash guard shirt type of a thing. So pretty limited uh, outfit. So the winter blues can be defeated. And how do you defeat them? Well, get outside, move your body in an exhilarating way, in a functional way, in an enjoyable way. Don't forget joy. You know, staying inside and doing a, a digital video or workout that you know and not changing your surroundings is evolutionary abnormal. You know, millions of years of hunting and gathering people and all the animals still that live in the wild, they're moving around a lot. They're seeing lots of different things. They're seeing nature, they're seeing trees change, the breeze change, the clouds change. You know, look up here, there are a few birds. There's a seagull here in December in Vienna I see a seagull up top, fascinating. We're nowhere near the sea. Maybe it's not a seagull. Maybe it's just something that looks like a seagull, a white dove, perhaps. So yeah, per correction on the seagull, but it, there's another white dove off in the distance. Probably won't be able to see it. But so you're getting out and you're seeing this stuff. You're breathing, hopefully, fresh air. Wouldn't that be nice if we were breathing fresh air? And You know, I'm in a city, but it's a city that's known for its public transportation, though, so not a lot of uh, car exhaust, automobile waste products. So that's a nice thing here. The air is typically good in Vienna. So the, the notion of paying for fitness and paying for wellness, a lot of people do it. And I'm not saying that's wrong, but you certainly don't need to. 
you've got a pair of shoes. These are my uh, hiking shoes. I'm running in them because of ice and, uh, and stability. So when I go up the hill here, there are going to be places with loose gravel and there's going to be ice. And so I want to be as stable as I can. So I'm using my hiking shoes, not my running shoes at this time of year. Running shoes, as soon as the snow's melted and there's not a lot of water on the area, I'll, I'll use those. But um, I can tell you that just for your own psychology, in the winter months, we're not going to be getting vitamin D in the, in the northern climate and, uh, you know, far away from the equator. Not a lot of vitamin D sun uh, at the distance and the angle of the sun at this time of year. But you're getting exhilaration and you're getting a change of space and location and you know you're letting your mind body and spirit get that stimulus and it's so good and you poop yourself out which is what we're supposed to do with our body we're supposed to use our fat cells for energy we're supposed to breathe and use our lungs we're supposed to use our spine posture which has curves in it to absorb so walking running hiking uh, distance skiing, ski the foe in French. Um, the, uh, I'll have to think of what that is in English, ski the foe. Um, so <clears throat> you're, you're doing this type of stuff and you're moving in a meaningful way and it's good for you and you feel good doing it if you're fit. If you're fit and connected and functionally fit and have no injuries that are nagging at you, you feel good when you're doing it. And even if you have a knee that doesn't quite work properly, you're feeling good in other parts of your body because you're out here doing it. So getting fit, yeah, most of the exercises on, on the internet and before that on DVDs, before that on VHS and beta tapes, were about transformation. So getting in shape, losing pounds, all those types of things, getting your back in gear, etc free entertainment. You, you know, you buy a cart for the kid and there you go, free entertainment. You've killed an hour or two and then you go home and you have a meal and you feel good. You can't hang out inside of concrete, wood and drywall all day long. And that's what some people do. They, they go from computer to phone to television to sports games on TV to America. America's most deadliest catch you know, about the crab industry. It, they just keep going. And if, they, and if they miss it for a half hour, they feel like they've missed out on something of one of the 1,000 options that they've had on, on TV or the unlimited am amount of things on video on YouTube and Facebook and Snapchat and all the other social media sites that they go to, which is crazy what they're missing out on is this. <laughs> and when you think about people recreating in the ancient times, the affluent people, the people who are the kings and the queens and the princes and the princesses, they're the ones who did a lot of recreating. They're the ones who had a stable of horses and went hunting and played polo. Those are the people who did the recreating with dancing. Now, the poorer people could also go for a walk in the country, the city, they, they may also have access to a horse, maybe for their work. They may take their family for a drive on the horse cart that they use for work six days a week. And maybe one day a week, they take them out on a horse cart for enjoyment and to go pick up some provisions from a, a contact or a store. So all good things. And then the social aspect. Don't forget the social aspect. And there are people talking while they're running and I uh, don't know what level these people are in running, but hey, they're out here doing it and they're talking and you know, what a great socialization and connection thing that they're doing. And that's so good for us. And in the books of, you know, the Blue Zone books and many other books that talk about the long lived people who get to be centenarians in, um, uh, places in Asia and other places. Sicily, I, there's a, a, some studies on people there. And uh, is it Okinawa, near Japan? 
And just these people live to be 104, 108, if you want to do that. But, you know, if you want to live till 92 and be healthful, that's another good goal. Be healthful and happy. The, uh, the studies show is the social connection they have with family members from friends on a daily basis is one of the pivotal pieces in their long lived, their health, their happiness, etc., and their avoidance of stress. So I'd encourage you to go out and do that and, you know, find places that are different. Um, if you're living in a very rural area uh, and it's all flat, your situation going to be a bit more challenged than if I lived in a place like that. I might uh, do some yoga and some martial arts classes because that's the that's a more maybe enjoyable thing to factor in to the um, to the program if there's no hills and limited hiking trails and limited views and limited lakes. Um, I might. I might do more of the connection with martial arts and yoga. So, you know, find find out what works. Find out what gives you enjoyment in a holistic way, in a natural way, and see what you can find. And come out and, you know, put your arm in arm on your significant other like this couple is doing right here. Arm in arm. And what a great connection on a Sunday in Vienna. So I wish you all the best with your health happiness and wellness. I am Sifu Slim. Please like, thumbs up, click the thumbs up down below. In the winter, put your gloves on, warm up, find a nice spot, and go out and get some exhilaration in a natural setting. Here's a statue playing the, uh, the flute, the fife, something along those lines. Here's a person jogging, using their, their arms out, getting some shoulder activity, different posture, etc. So all kinds of good things you can do in a time where there's no leaves on the trees, uh, but the castle's here year-round and can be visited. And find what you consider the park, the garden, the nature zone where you are tomorrow or today and go out and enjoy it. Aloha from Vienna. Schönen Tag. Ciao. Tschüss.